Hello, I'm going to give you a, a quick demo of the multi-species sward app from the toolbox of multi-species sward project. Um, and so to start off with, when you launch the app, you should see a screen um, like this. That's the kind of launch screen with a nice photo on it. Um, and from here, you get to all of the uh, options that the app does by clicking on the menu in the top right. Um, and what I'm going to do um, is go through all these options one by one so you can kind of see everything that the app does um, and you can get to this menu at any point uh, it should always be in the top right of the screen on every sort of part of the app so you can skip around uh, depending on what you want to do so starting with the species information on the top the top of the menu um, from here you can see a list of all of the the sword species that the app contains that we have information on and we've kind of generally tried to keep uh, the sort of whenever you see a um, the name of a species, you will, we've also got a photo of it, so you kind of get a, a knowledge of of what these things look like for when you're doing surveys and things. Um, so let's go and have a look at chicory. So this uh, is the the species information page for chicory, um, and you can see here uh, a bunch of images, a bunch of photographs of the plant. Um, a different stages of growth, um, a different features of the plant with little captions explaining, so like a leaf uh, is narrow, oval, often hairy, often toothed, often pale green. And you can just swipe between these images by moving left and right, swiping left and right. Uh, down below we have the species traits um, and this is uh, basically the result of the TOMS project or a kind of um, concise visualization of all of the research that's gone into finding out about these different species. Um, and so we have uh, for chicory, we have um, a sort of thumbs up for, for protein, minerals and digestibility, and a thumbs down for persistence. Um, and so we have a kind of traffic light scheme where we have um, red, yellow and green for different things, but also the thumbs uh, images as well. And to find out a little bit more information on these traits or kind of where this, uh, how this has been decided, you can just click on them um, and you can see that for protein, uh, we can see that three studies agreed and one study disagreed. So on balance, we think that it's pretty good for protein. Um, if we look at persistence, we can see that six studies agree with this conclusion and zero studies disagreed, so less controversial here. On some of these traits, we have a bit more information. So on minerals, uh, we actually list out the minerals um, from the literature uh, that this species, that chicory, provides. So calcium, magnesium, zinc, etc. Um, and some of these traits we don't know about. So we don't know about the water logging tolerance um, or the marginal so soils tolerance for chicory. Um, so no evidence was found. We need to do more research in this area. Um, so if we go and have a look at a grass instead. So this is Timothy. Um, it's pretty much the same setup. We have a plant, then we have a close-up on its flower, um, and then we have uh, a close-up on sort of distinguishing features for this species. And then we have the species traits uh, for Timothy, um, just the same down below. So that's the species information uh, sort of section. Um, but we've also included a way of um, identifying species. So out in the field, um, a set of questions that you can answer to figure out which, what species a particular grass or legume is. Um, so looking at uh, grasses to start with. So we have sort of these kinds of questions. So look at the place where the leaf joins the stem. Can you see the oracles at the leaf base? Let's say there are no oracles. Um, and uh, cut across the stem, what shape is it? Let's say it's uh, round. The next question is to check the ligule. Um, so what does that look like? And let's say that it's, uh, in this case, it's a, a flat ragged top. And then we can tell that this is probably a, a meadow foxtail. So we can go to the species info um, for that, uh, for the meadow foxtail. Uh, and kind of get more information about it. Um, let's take a legume as an example. So we can see the first question is, is what are the leaves? Let's say that 
uh, there are three leaves. Um, what is the leaflet on the end like? Does it have uh, a stalk or not? Um, let's say that uh, it has no stalk. Um, are the leaves hairy? Try st stroking the underside with your finger. Um, and then we can see that that's uh, resolved to red clover. So this is kind of one way of uh, just kind of getting more information, more familiarity with these species and what they're good for in comparison. Um, and one thing to add is that species traits here, the, the comparisons in the traffic light system are comparisons within uh, species of this type. So um, for a legume, it's, it's for legumes, it's, it's uh, a comparison between them and with grasses, it's a comparison between them. And for herbs, it's a comparison between them. So the other section of this, this is all very well and good sort of presenting information, but it's useful to also collect information on your farm and store it and kind of see how you're doing in terms of biodiversity. So we have a My Farm section on the menu. And from here, you can see uh, a list of fields. So if we go ahead and create a new field, uh, we'll give it a name to begin with. Um, so let's call this Marshy field. Um, you can have the date that it was uh, sown. So move it earlier in the year. Um, we have a soil type as well that you can record for this, uh, for this field. And then we need to list the species that have been sown on this field. So we have um, the similar buttons to the ones you saw before. So we can select which of these um, we've sown on this field. So I'll select a whole bunch of these for now. Okay. And then you can add some kind of freeform notes uh, for free text uh, about the field. So this is a note. Okay. And then we save the field and now we have marshy field added to our farm. So if we go into that, we can then see the page for that field and all of these things you can edit afterwards. Um, so they're just displayed there. Um, and we also have a field biodiversity chart, um, which is empty at the moment because we've not done any surveys for this field. So let's go ahead and do a survey, so perform survey. And this is uh, explaining how to do a W-shaped transect across a field. Um, and so we break uh, the sort of field down into these nine samples um, as walking across it in this kind of pattern. Um, we can enter a date that we did the survey um, and then we can start it. Um, and so this displays kind of the, the point that you're on. So here we are on sample one. So let's say we walk to that point and then we can do our survey and we can select. So these are the sown species for this field and we can select which of these uh, we've, we can see. So we save that. Sample two, select some of these. Sample three, let's go through this. Select quite a lot of these so that we can see a nice visualization at the end. Okay, so when you've done the survey, when it's complete, we've done the ninth uh, sample, you can view the results for this field and we can see that now we have um, a chart, a bar for the survey that we've just done in this field. And so the idea is that over time, as you do more and more surveys, they'll stack up in this chart and you can see if the biodiversity is improving or not as a kind of record. We could also get a more detailed results if we uh, select detailed results and you can see a per uh, species record uh, of, of all the surveys that have done. So this is basically the data that we just recorded, the number of times, the number of samples where we've seen that species in this field. Um, and this makes more sense when you've got a few more samples. So if we go to another field that I've added uh, lots of uh, kind of random data to to test this system, 
you can see that here. So we've got a whole bunch of surveys and we can see in the detailed results uh, for each survey uh, over each species of plant. So the idea is here that you'd be able to see which uh, species um, kind of change over time and how they change on a per species basis. Okay, so it's all very well and good having this information stored uh, within the app and on your phone, but uh, we also kind of want to make it accessible to you to do what you want with. And so we've got a system here where you can download the data. And this is very basic. It works over email. So you can type in an email address at the top here. And this is just my silly uh, developer testing email address. And I can say I want to send data uh, to this email. And so what that does is it now uh, opens the Gmail, uh, my Gmail app at my phone, and it kind of writes an email for you uh, with some text saying this is the farm data from the SWORD app. Um, and then we have a CSV file that's added as an attachment to this email. Um, and so we can go ahead and send that. Um, and then if we wait a few seconds now, I should have that email has appeared on my phone because I'm essentially sending it to myself. Um, and then we can see the email has arrived and it's got the CSV file. So if I select that, it will download it. And then I can open it in uh, Google Sheets as an example. And this is all the raw information that you've collected um, doing your sampling across your fields. And so to start at the end here uh, with the record species, you can see that that column has got all of the species that you've seen. The record sample relates to which point on the W on the transect that you've seen it. Um, we then also have the survey time that that was done. And then we have the field information. So the field sort saw type for that survey um, and the date it was sown, etc. So this is provided so you can use this data for whatever purposes you need um, and to kind of give it access to other applications or other software that you might need. Um, but the other aspect of this um, is that we um, also have a feature uh, where you can tick this box on download to say I consent to show my farm data for research. And this is because the researchers at Dutchy College um, really kind of are interested to know how uh, these different species are working on your farm and how they are uh, performing. Um, so they can do more research into this um, and kind of find out more about it in future. So if you want to um, contribute your data to this project, you can tick that box there. And when you click on send data, it will, all, it will, all it does is CC the email to um, the address of somebody at Dutchy College. So it'll just add them in the CC list for the email. So they'll just get the same data as you. So you can kind of see what it is that they're, what they're reading at any one time. So it's exactly the same as the CSV file that's attached to the email. Um, Okay, I think that's uh, pretty much everything um, we have. Oh yeah, you can go straight into a survey from the menu and then you pick the field that you want to survey. Um, and then all we have there is an about page to tell you kind of more about the project and who funded it and um, more about who developed it and so on and so forth. Okay, thank you very much for listening.